I'm here this morning on Zoom to meet with Cheryl Ann Lambert Walsh. We will be talking about what is so much of her life, Project Just Because, which provides so much assistance to those who are in need, which has expanded in this past year, uh, dealing with the COVID virus and quarantine and all the hardships related to it. Cheryl Ann has many stories about her work and much to say because she's so devoted to it, but she also will be here to talk a little bit about her life here uh, as a Hopkinton resident as well. So I look forward to this conversation and invite you to join us. Good morning, Cheryl Ann. Good, morning. Good to morning. see you. Uh, on the other side of town, perhaps uh, on our Zoom, uh, place of meeting today rather than your home where we usually are for meet your neighbor and thank, thank you, you for having me oh yes and thank you for uh seeing me because uh as i understand your days are so busy and and we will be talking about that uh and the words uh of why you are so busy in life uh ha our project just because which is so much a very important part of Hopkinton community and beyond for our world really. And I saw you just the other day out in the parking lot and was talking to you a bit this past- It was so week. cold outside that day I met so you. So <laughs> cold, that's right. But we, you were there for what you embody, this work that's so important to you with Project Just Because. Can you tell people, some people in, Hopkinton or beyond might not even know what it is. Could you tell a little about this sure. business that started with you? Um, it was a charity I started in my basement 24 years ago. And um, we're now up on South Street in Hopkinton at 109 South Street. Um, and it's just a warehouse, 11,000 square foot warehouse filled with nothing fancy, just bins and shelves. Um, and we provide the Hopkinton food pantry um, with the pandemic, we opened up last year a mass statewide food pantry. And about five years ago, we did the gluten-free pantry to help people with um, a, a different element of their health so that they needed gluten-free food. Hmm. Um, so food's a very big part of us, but we do clothing, school supplies, 15,000 gifts at the holiday time, birthday, um, and keep a family warm during our harsh New England winters. So we do a lot of just, you know, base programs to just help people in need. Yes, uh, I looked at the website and there is quite a few different types of provisions offered there. Um, and how long has this been a part of our town? Um, about 24 years ago, uh -huh. um, I went to a meeting with Mary McLeod, and she worked mm -hmm. as a town outreach worker, a really sweet person, yeah. who said, why don't you come have a meeting? And they hosted the pantry back then. And I said, I want to help. So I started just a little something in the basement, basic clothes, basic coats, toiletries. And I was just like, it just started forming as, you know, they were doing food at the time. Then I took over the pantry and we um, just started from there. And it was just basic needs and people, you know, even back then, it was just whoever was in need, we tried to help with what we had. And then my beautiful friend started with garages, basements, and attics. We had like 12 or 13 at one point, and they had intervention with me and like, we love you, but um, we need a building. So we went over to Hayden Row our first year and just leased a building and had an event to pay for a lease. Um, and we been moving ever since every few years. Yeah. Um, we've landed on South Street a lot. And we just get, keep getting more space. Um, and we've just tried to continue with the philosophy, if you're in need, with love, your extended family member. Privacy is a huge issue. And if you're sitting out there watching now, it's very easy to come to us. It's walk-in and um, there's no questions asked. It's just basic if you needed food, you get a food form, you check what you need. It's all safe with the pandemic and you go to the side door and your items go, whatever we have, right uh, next to your car, you get out and you take them away. So that's food. Wow. Uh, same thing with clothes. 
is other programs that are forms that you just fill out and then people fill them for you. Um, and then you come and pick up, same thing, side door, back door. And um, it's just a very simple process. We try and make it um, a happy experience and not uh, hard for people who are in need to worry about this forms and this questions and the signatures and uh, nothing like that. Yeah, it sounds like it's safe. It's secure, no questions asked. It's very simple. Uh, and anyone can come for anyone else. Um, yeah. It's like if you saw your neighbor in need, if you saw a friend that needed something, um, and for the town of Hopkinton only, we help the state of Mass, we always have, but the town of Hopkinton, we have delivery service. So if you can't uh -huh. get to us, you wow. just drop it off on your doorstep. Uh -huh. And um, that's just for Hopkinton only. I love our community and anything I can do to help. Um, and there's a lot of people, not just with the pandemic now, whether it be quarantine or seniors, it's always been, you know, whether cancer treatments, disabilities, they needed some extra help. So we wanted to always make sure for our community, beautiful volunteers, mm -hmm. and they uh, will drop off things. And again, it's absolutely all private, it goes right on your doorstep. Yeah. No yeah. contact. Privacy is so important, and oh, it's uh, huge. and I've it's heard a lot of those people to come face to face. And if they, we have a lot of families that won't come and never step foot in the project, and they don't want to, and they never will. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. want to help families, in all the years I have found, you need to find a way to meet those needs, and you have to work with the families, or you won't receive the families in need. They, you know, they they won't confide in you. You won't get them. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oh, and so uh, important uh, to know of a center, a place to go for help. You know, I know from um, some of my own uh, extended family uh, back in time had been in need of food to get by until the next paycheck and how important it was at that time to have a church center to go to and uh, get a loaf of bread and a peanut butter that got a family of nine. Uh, uh, fed uh, back then, wow. and you know, it's it's so important to know where to go and what's uh, possible to help when things get scarce. Um, how is it going in this year of dealing with the pandemic and with quarantine and and families and and people in need? How is it working there for you? Challenging. Yeah. Um, I never went through a pandemic before. Last year, the rug came right under my feet. I honestly didn't know it was coming and I didn't know the changes and our school system with like remote. We do the breakfast and lunch program for the remote students yeah. and the beautiful school that we have, the people we work with, they bring the lunches and the breakfast and then people who are in the remote learning, you know, particularly who have chosen that for their students, they'll come and get breakfast and lunch from us at the pantry. Um, we've had a lot of safety issues with the Board of Health. Sean's been incredibly kind. We have beautiful services in town. And, you know, he really, the Board of Health stepped us up for safety for my own volunteers and staff. So we'd like a shield and no one comes in the building. And we have a family pod where, you know, volunteers and staff come in at a set time or regular and no one else is allowed in the building. No clients, no groups can serve. We just had to get rid of all of that during the pandemic to keep us open and less exposure. So I've had to step up and learn a lot and I'm learning every day, but it was to make it so what I call it the drive-through McDonald's service now. It's, uh, or I should be healthier, drive-through some other service, but it's just trying to meet the needs, stay open so that no one gets exposed. And, um, you know, challenging, we had all our events canceled. I mean, marathon is shindig, golf. I mean, that's our fundraise and it's gone. Um, so it, it's just challenging. But people stepped up. They're beautiful people. And, um, you know, you just have your faith and you just keep going on and every day. And here we are almost a year later. And knock on wood, we're still open. So uh, it's a gift every day to serve people. Yeah. So you uh, started this gift and then people of community are uh, contributing in many different ways to make it happen and uh, help one another. Uh, I as planted a seed and I'm not very good with plants, but a lot of people wanted the garden every day. It takes a village. Yeah. And, um, you know, I may be sometimes people take pictures of me all over the place. It is the staff, it's the volunteers, 
and it's the special families who trust us that come. Um, those are the people who are the real people that go through things that, you know, that we want to help. Yeah. And there's a lot of people now that have attached themselves to us in a different way where they know families in need. So now they're part of our team and they come and take items they need directly to the family. So we're wow. servicing people in whatever way needs to be met. Yeah. And um, do people um, get help for pets as well? Yes. Bay Path in Hopkinton, beautiful people connected to us, uh, partnered with us. And um, I, I, it wasn't but a few months ago, we had an email from a father who, because of the pandemic and the job or whatever, that night he did not have enough food to feed his dog. Mm -hmm. And you hear stories like that and they're, you know, it's horrifying to me. I have um, two dogs um, and to a family unit, pets are part of the family. So we wanted to make sure and they have partnered with us where they are keeping us uh, filled with dog food and pet food and treats and things and just an open heart there so that it's full service. It's not just dry goods. Like years ago, the pantry used to be just dry goods. And with the Mass State Pantry, which includes Hopkington and Hopkington Food Pantry, um, we host both, have you know, fruits and produce and meats and protein, which is very important, cleaning supplies, paper goods, pet food, just if you needed something. That's what we're trying to step up and continue to serve better. Yeah. So anyone in need can come and show up and be assisted. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We and welcome anyone in the state of Massachusetts um, with humanity. Uh, a hug. I used to give a lot of hugs out. My hugs are gone um, for the pandemic, but a, um, a virtual hug goes their way. And like I said, there are people who have different elements of their health. They can't step out. They need us. Um, mothers, fathers going through challenges with remote learning, hybrid learning, cancelization of schools. It's been a really huge problem. Mothers I know have quit their jobs and put themselves, find themselves completely working and now in need. Um, you know, trying to now be helping support the teachers to support them um, as their teachers of their children and keeping them fed and being at home with them. So it's a very huge issue and it drops an in income or they're trying to work at home. It's a lot of juggling mm -hmm. and people are adjusting. Um, but we found a lot of people drop um, through the cracks and we're trying to be that safety net too during this pandemic. So how do you get people to find out about you, to go to you? It's hard. We don't have any advertising or marketing in our budget. <laughs> so um, we just say to people, we're really trying hard with uh, social media a little bit now, stepped up to do some polls. Um, anyone who knows of us to maybe spread the word for us. Um, we've tried to work with different people who know families in need and open a real door. We want it busted right open and said, if you have families in need and they are in need of the basics, whether it be clothing, whether it be food, um, this is a weekly pantry. They can come weekly. They can tell us what they need and take what they need and bring it to the families. We, they don't have to walk in our door. We've been serving for years where we go to a hospital program since I started. And those hospital children, adults and seniors don't come in our door. We bring the gifts to them. So it's something we've been doing for a while. We're just reinventing the wheel a little bit so that we make sure we're not missing um, need out there because a person can't due to language, due to transport, due to uh, you know health, can't come to us. Uh, we want to be there and we want to be a strong provider for anyone out there who Maybe they're helping families in need and they're trying to pay for it and they don't have enough. So it's like what they don't have, we can, you know, supplement, whatever. I work with a lot of different people now. Some people are cooking for families and they just don't have enough food. Mm -hmm. So we can supplement the food they're cooking. So whatever way we can serve them. Yeah, yeah. So you don't um, want my cooking. That's the only <laughs> thing I won't offer. It's not a service. My poor children will tell you that. <laughs> Well, uh, thank your children for sharing you for the work you do. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the sense of family that you carry in you. But first, just to clarify, as viewers, 
um, how we can help. People can spread the word by uh, word of mouth and perhaps you could use some volunteer assistance with marketing if there are some people who are very good at publicity. We have a and Facebook page and we're trying okay. and I know nothing about social media, zero. So I can tell you we have a Facebook page, we have Instagram. I mean, so if people could connect to us and share love followers to just you know follow us and then maybe reach new families that way and if they're serving families already and they need our assistance or people who are unaware of all the items they could get from us year round food weekly and we would really like to help we have a domestic abuse a 211 with the state uh, someone has a fire a flood they just find themselves in a bad situation we have a center that has everything set up within our warehouse and every day we're open and it's like people don't know that stuff um and with people even doing schoolwork, you know maybe they need school supplies during the year and it's not just that when we do our back to school program so um anyone out there that has networks it would really help us to connect with projectjustbecause.org our facebook page and just any way they want and just spread the word so that would you say that's the um that is the way you need help. That is a source of help. Most awareness is huge because mm -hmm. just picture that mother, that father, that grandmother, that senior sitting here going, I need something. Yeah. I cannot get it. We had a senior in Hopkinton that um, had a beautiful uh, family situation where the son would come and help her once a week with groceries. Um, something happened to him. He was unable to come. She had no other family. So all of a sudden we're bringing her fresh milk and whatever she needs. And then sometimes people don't realize too, certain elderly people who maybe don't use their ovens anymore and they survive on prepared fixed meals by the microwave. The microwave is their meals. Um, so they need fresh produce, they need fresh protein. We have pre-prepared meals. We have a chef in town, he's fabulous and like just brought 200 more meals at the holiday, he brought a bunch of meals. And, we're trying to do different things to continue to serve people in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things that when you're helping people, you get to know them and, you know, walking in with maybe raw meat to a person who doesn't even use an oven, it's not as easy, or maybe there's different health issues um, or even a comfort letter. I mean, I have an elderly mother and, you know, certain things you get to know about them and that way they're healthier and more nutritious if we work with them. Yeah, well, um, speaking of your mother, uh, I, I want to move on a little bit. It's clear that so much is provided and this is such a hard time for everyone in the world in many different ways. And it's certainly so valuable for community, for our, our country and our world to have places, havens like this, where we're helping one another. And I know from you that uh, this is who you are. And I know when I ask you about your areas of passion or hobby, otherwise, there isn't much time in your life. And you say your family is your passion, your uh, children and being uh, having them a part of your life. Um, and I also know that uh, you have told me that you come from a uh, family where uh, your parents taught you about looking after one another and your neighbors and even your grandmother uh, yes. teaching you about that. I wonder if you could tell a little bit about how you see family, your uh, value of family connected to your work and who you are. It was a gift. When I was a little girl, my grandmother, if someone got sick, she would knit and she would these little quilting squares. She tried to teach me. My square was definitely not what she anticipated me making. Mm -hmm. So she said, don't quit your day job. That's probably not your forte. Mm -hmm. But she used to make a quilt and bring soup to her neighbor. Mm -hmm. So if um, someone wasn't feeling good, it was just the norm for her. She was so giving and kind. And it was, you know, she was just a just beautiful family who mm -hmm. gave back and it was not, something special to her it was this is what you do you know you have someone in need and you know she was going she went to her church and she went to her bingo and i visited her during those times out the door i would go 
So it just it's just perspective. And then my dad and my mom, um, my dad was always on a foundation. My parents worked and it's just they do site visits at places and my dad would take me. And I I saw things that I'd never had seen and I wasn't exposed to me. And it was I, you know, in a family life that was very good. And I just learned a lot, like at a young age, sort of planted a little seed for me. Um, and, and then your seed onward to your children and your deep love of uh, family that you have now. Absolutely. My That's children what? are my world. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my father, um, you know, God rest his soul. He just, he really supported, my parents supported me wanting to start this out of my basement. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I used to go to charity events and I see these little girls dancing and you'd pay a hundred dollars and you'd get a soda and you pay for it at the cash bar. And then, uh, but I didn't drink so it was soda and they had like nuts or chips at your table and they do a little show. And I always wondered where did that little girl come from? So I did a site visit and I saw it and I saw this little girl with a, a loaf of bread and then she was eating the bread right when we were there. And I was like, wow, she's hungry. And she'd take the other half back to her family. It was poverty to the, and I'm like, in the state of Massachusetts, it's America. I'm like, that was hungry. I was not exposed. I didn't know. And I learned very quickly in all elements, any community in the state of Mass in the United States is need, but it's behind closed doors. Yeah. And, and sometimes you don't see it as relevant as when the news says there's 1,200 people in a certain town and they emphasize that every community has it. It's just in its own way. And some of it's more private and quiet about it. And you show us that we are all family in this way of taking care of one another. And- uh, Oh, I love my, the families that come in, whether they come in the door, whether we do our doorstep, whether I just speak to them, uh, a volunteer comes in and we share an exciting story. Um, like over the weekend, a new volunteer was helping uh, a number of families with food and came back and got clothes because they needed it. We were looking at the baby clothes and with just warm, cute little cuddlies. And, you know, my children are grown, you know, they're older. My youngest is in high school. And I'm like, we're looking at these little baby clothes, just thinking this we can provide to this beautiful little baby girl. And it's, it's a gift, but the person who donates to us, the person who gives us a financial donation or an item we need, is also the team member here. Without right. all these beautiful people donating, we would have nothing in our warehouse. So whether we're the recipient or whether we're the giver or the volunteer, it's all part of family. And I notice how you keep people. going back to back to work, back to, and I see we have five minutes left and I just wanna ask a few questions more about you. Like how, where do you get, how do you take care of yourself? And, uh, does faith play into this? And how do you find peace and well, self-care? I wear my cross every day. Um, very faithful each day. I just take a leap of faith to try and keep open and keep helping. Uh, my children are safe and my mother. And um, it, it, how I take care of myself is just, um, I go out kayaking when it's nice. I read a good book that's happy. Um, I watch the Hallmark Channel with my mother. Uh, it's just very boring in a different way. But happiness is when my children are safe. And uh, it's just a lot of love in my heart. I couldn't be happier to have my family and my extended family as the project. Yeah. It's just beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what would you say? I know you have a deep love for children in particular, all children uh, you see as your family. What is your wish for our where we are now in our future generation? I hope, I know the pandemic's been so hard on so many people and a lot of tragedy, a lot of death, a lot of sickness. Um, but I really hope from this, I've seen kindness. I've seen more people spending time with their families and more people offering, what can we do to help? Um, sometimes bad stuff in the world turns us to be stopping being so busy and um, taking a different look at life and what really means a lot. And I've just cherished the time with my family even more so not knowing what the future leads health wise. I mean, I'm older and this is a bad thing going on out there. So I give my kids extra hugs 
and I'm blessed to be open and people support us, even though we have no events and we can't do anything to continue on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and thank you so much for sharing this show and what you do. And um, I really appreciate our community and the love around us. Yes. Well, that is uh, truly uh, sensed uh, and felt in talking with And a you. hug. I'm sending you a hug. hug. That's right. A Zoom hug. <laughs> So important, and I thank you so much. Oh, we have two minutes left. What about that before? Oh, do we? <laughs> oh, I haven't okay. talked enough. <laughs> uh, no, no, you have not. Uh, do you have? Do you have a, a favorite story? Maybe a little two-minute story, a one-minute story to help us feel what you care for or about life in general. I have a little dream. Okay, my little dream is that we would have a free grocery store in the project. Uh, and everything's free, but like that everyone could come in and humanity would just pick up the pace where anyone could just walk in and go down the aisles and people who need it, receive it. And people who wanna volunteer, help fill the shelves. And doing the Mass State Pantry uh, last year with the pandemic and opening something that large had just started to see of another little dream to just keep oh. going. And um, it's just yeah. very special to my heart because food is really important to people, yeah. for the children, nutrition, and just making people more secure. Yeah, that is a beautiful dream. And you have certainly planted the seeds uh, for already a vast garden that has taken care of us as community in so many ways and invited us to be a part of helping one another and uh, receiving help and seeing how it's all interconnected and of love and care for one another, caring for one another as community, which we need. Someone watching who's in need, don't be afraid. Come to us, have a friend, have a neighbor, share with the person you love, tell them what you need and we'll help you. Yeah, yeah. And thank you so much for the work that you do. And I wish you well and continue to take care of yourself because I know you work so hard all the time over there. So be sure to, you can't take a kayak ride, but <laughs> maybe, it, uh, maybe I'll be skating on the kayak today after the storm. Right. <laughs> yes, well, take care of yourself and thank you again, Cheryl. And it's a pleasure to talk with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.